Hello, everyone. This is Wes Lambert uh, speaking with you today, talking about creating a Velociraptor collector. Uh, if you haven't heard of Velociraptor already, it is an excellent endpoint visibility tool used for uh, host monitoring, host forensics, um, lots of lots of different different ways it can be used, uh, threat hunting, uh, just a great tool overall for that. So we're going to be talking about how to create that dedicated offline collector so that we can go over to endpoints and then collect those forensic artifacts that we're looking to collect. Okay, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and, and get started with that. And just a brief overview here, we'll talk about why uh, we might want to create an offline collector. And then we're just going to go through the various steps of uh, creating that collector and then getting the data that we're looking for. So typically we'll create an offline collector whenever it, well, it could be a couple of situations. So uh, we might have isolated networks, uh, networks that we don't have access to from our Velociraptor server that we maintain on a dedicated host. So maybe agents wouldn't be able to communicate with that server per se. Um, or maybe we can't install local services on those boxes um, or we don't have the ability to, you know, we don't want to. Uh, or maybe we have customer environments where we don't have architecture, we don't have Velociraptor stood up and we don't have a client server uh, kind of architecture. This is where we would come in and create this offline collector and then we can give it to our incident responders and then have them go run that on the machines in our isolated networks or in those customer environments. Uh, so this is usually the, the main reason why we would want to create this type of collector. Now, as far as actually creating the collector, there's going to be a few different steps uh, that we have to go through. So a lot of this is documented very heavily and very well on the Velociraptor docs site here. Um, if you go to, it'll be under triage and acquisition here, and then scrolling down to offline collections right here, there's a great section on how we can do that here. And I'm going to walk through some of this right now. So. We have a Velociraptor server stood up here, just uh, basically one client joined to the server. Its name is VRPRD. And what we're going to do here is create that offline collector. So to do that, we're going to click over here on the stack right here, these, these, uh, this icon right here. And we're going to click what looks like this paper airplane right here. And what this is going to do is take us to a wizard that will allow us to collect the artifacts we want to collect. Uh, specify what we're looking for and be able to package that up into a single binary to ship off over to our hosts. Now, this particular box that I'm looking to target is going to be a Linux host. So I'm going to choose Linux artifacts here, just a few different ones, such as the APT sources, uh, packages, uh, maybe I would like some netstat information, mm, let's see, maybe some bash history and a PS list as well. So I've selected all of those, and now I can configure the different parameters for that collection if I would like to for each individual artifact. Now going from there, the collection specific configuration, which is going to be the overarching collection of these artifacts, is going to be right here. And this is where we're going to specify our target OS. Uh, we're going to specify some other details to really guide our uh, collector to where we want it to be. So in this instance, since I'm targeting a Linux endpoint, I'm going to choose the Linux option here. And I'm not going to specify a password here, but we could if we would like to. There are various report templates that you can create, or you can use the default report template. Right now, we're not going to generate a report with that. We're just going to uh, keep it the default right here. And then also, there are a couple of different options here of ways that we can specify our collection. or I'm sorry, the in format of our collection. So we can just have it be a zip archive that's dumped locally on disk for the uh, particular endpoint. We can shoot it up to a Google Cloud bucket or an AWS bucket, which is really useful, especially if you're again in that customer environment and you want to be able to send that data back to a central location where you can pick it up and process it after the fact. Um, and then also SFTP is another option that we have here. But for the time being, we're going to choose the default zip archive option here. If we wanted to change our binary that we actually use, our base binary, we could change that here, this Velociraptor Linux uh, configuration right here. 
We're not going to do that right now. And then there are some other details here that we could fill out, including the output format of the results. So we could see that you know maybe we want the results in JSON, or maybe we want the results in CSV and JSON for post-processing later. Maybe we have some other tools that we want to import that data into, and it's only CSV compliant. That's another way that we can specify that format there and be able to post-process that data with additional tools. Another helpful thing that we have here is this prefix. And what this output prefix is going to do is uh, kind of like what the name suggests is it's going to prefix the name of the collection file with whatever we specify here. So I'm just going to choose BTV 2022 to add that prefix to the collection. And then I can specify some additional resources here in this next tab. But I'm not going to at this time. I think all of these defaults will work well for what we're looking to do. And then we can review the different details of the collection that we're creating here. We just scroll down. This is the actual VQL of the Velociraptor query language uh, that we'll, we'll see here. Um, so if we go over here and click Launch, it's going to take a minute. It's going to go through and check and see what kind of collector it needs to build. It's going to go through those steps. And then after that, you'll see the status changes for the server utils create collector artifact. And now we see that it's completed. So we can see the results here, basically just some summary details, some the hash information uh, for that binary, and then also the virtual file store path for that. And if we scroll up, we can see the log, we can see you know, what it did during that uh, collector build. We can see if there were any issues there. And then we can go to the uploaded files here. This is what, where we're going to actually download the collector binary. And then we can put that on that endpoint. So what we're going to do here is just click to download this here. And we'll see it's downloading. We'll wait for that to finish downloading here in just a second. It'll take just a minute. And then once that's downloaded, we'll SCP that up to our target endpoint. Uh, just a very simple way to, to copy that there. So I'm going to go to the terminal here, expand this just a bit. And I'm actually going to get a tab here. Oops, clean. And I'm going to SCP and downloads, collector, say, we'll say, which one was that? Up here it should be this one right here, Collector Velociraptor V065 and Linux. And we'll just copy that up to our endpoint. Obviously, if, if you're in an enterprise or in some other type of environment, you might have a better way that you do this, uh, whether it's through PowerShell or through uh, you know some other uh, deployment machine or mechanism. That's certainly another way to do that. I'm just going to copy this up here to the home directory. And this is going to be our server that we're actually looking to investigate here. We're actually looking to kick off this collector binary on this host. And uh, this host named Secret Sauce here, you know, maybe there's some interesting things here that uh, an attacker is, has gone looking for. And we're trying to find evidence of that here. So we'll check to see if our collector binary is here. And we do see that it's right here, collector velociraptor v065 linux amd64 okay and all we have to do here really is just actually yeah, have to actually make it executable and then we'll just do oops, we'll execute the collector here we need to do this from uh you know with elevated permissions so we're using sudo here and we just hit enter and it just goes off and does its thing and as you can see, this was super fast. Um, we can see, you know, kind of up here what artifacts we were going through. These are not very uh, heavy. These do not take very long. But if we're using some more uh, intensive artifacts or we're, you know, we're taking longer to do things, you'll see that it may take a little bit longer here to finish this uh, particular collection and output this. So you see the end report right here, essentially at the end of it. And then if we do an ls here, we'll see the zip file. That it created and you'll see it's prepended with our btv 2022 
collection and then the host name right here. So that's our resultant collection uh, zip file. And if we were to unzip that, uh, we would see all the contents, uh, you know, in this case, JSON uh, formatted of the, uh, the artifacts that we collected. But we want to do something else here. Um, we want to take this and then import this into our server. So what we can do, you know, aside from just going off and reviewing these results uh, one by one or, you know, in some other fashion, post-processing with other tools, we can actually take these and somewhat kind of sneaker net these back into the server, even though we're not, we don't have that client server relationship, uh, you know, that traditional uh, reporting back to the server kind of thing. So what we'll do here is we'll actually SMP this over to the Velociraptor server that we have here. And I'll move this over so we can see that. And if I remember the IP address, just put that in the move back over a little bit. Put that in the home directory here. All right. Oops. Okay. So we've got to the sudo on that. All right, cool. So we just needed those admin privs so that we could copy that over uh, from the machine. Now, again, um, you know, you, typically if you have a different way that you post process these results, you might have this already sending to AWS or to GCP. Uh, so you might not being, be doing this manually. Uh, so you know, maybe less of a step necessarily for you to have to do that. So we'll go over to this VR this VR PRD server, which is our Velociraptor server here. And let's do a quick listing here. And we'll see that we have the BTB 2022 collection here. Now, one thing that we have to do before we try to import this into the server and review the results is we'll actually want to change the permissions on this file um, just in case, uh, just to make sure that the Velociraptor server here can have permissions to import this uh, into the data store. So we've done that here. And we'll see Velociraptor, Velociraptor. Okay, we're good there. All right, so now, so far, we've created that collector binary. We've run the collection it was super fast. Um, you know, we had specified our, our different Linux artifacts. And now we're going to go import this in through the GUI. So I'm going to minimize this here. And what we can do here is from the server artifact screen, you can search for import. Uh, here it is, import collection. This is the one we want right here. And we can see right here that it's an automated pre, uh, I'm sorry. It basically takes the zip archive and then imports it into the server. So we can configure it here, we'll leave the client ID to auto because we'll let it just generate a, a random client ID. But one thing that we can do just to help um, differentiate this um, or to you know tag it with a particular name, uh, because again you know these are kind of disparate collections. Uh, the server has not previously known about this particular box or these results, so we're going to call this secret sauce for the host name of the box that we um, we ran that collection on, and then we're just going to specify the path on disk to that collection. And let's go back and grab that file name real quick. Just copy this. A little bit easier here. Now, one reason that uh, we don't have an import straight from the UI is because a lot of these artifacts uh, or these collections can be very large, um, especially if uh, on Windows, maybe you're running the Cape Files target artifact and maybe you're collecting a, a ton of different stuff, uh, kind of ton of different things. Uh, from that host, it can be you know, gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes. So um, it can be really big. So we don't want to force that through the UI. We just let the server pick that up from the file system like so. Now, if we wanted to specify any of this stuff, we could do that here. I'm going to leave it as the default and I'm going to launch this. And it should take just a second here. And we'll see that it finished. We can see the log here that it was creating a new client, essentially, and importing that zip file. And then we can see these different uh, file names, essentially, that were in that collector binary. 
the different JSON files, which we could have reviewed manually, but I wanted to import it into the server to make it easier. And now this is a cool thing. If we actually go over here now to the clients, we'll see that this client isn't, necessary, isn't necessarily connected, right? Because it's not in that client server architecture, but it does register as a client and we can review the results just like if we had it connected to the server. So if we go over here to the collected screen, we'll see all of those artifacts that we selected to collect as collected underneath this client that was imported. And now we can go back and we can review these different, pull it up here, we can review the different results for each one of these artifacts here. And then if I had any files uploaded, we could do the same thing for those. But we can review this stuff. What makes it really awesome is like as if it was connected already to the server. So it's a really, really great way to be able to take that data and import it back into the server and have that same kind of uh, post processing capability, right? Maybe even post process it in a notebook like we do with our other data uh, and bring that back in and just uh, you know get at what we're looking for. Uh, so it helps us that much more as an analyst or as an incident responder if we're able to do that uh, very quickly and uh, very efficiently. So this is definitely a great way to do that. All right, so I've kind of skipped through these already, these steps. But as far as the demo and as far as, uh, you know, just showing you guys how to create this collector binary, um, that's really it. It's very simple. Uh, it's very quick to be able to create this binary. Um, if you wanted to configure it for AWS, all you would have to do is throw in those bucket details for S3, and you would be good to go, you'd be uploading there. Um, but please, if you have any questions or feedback, um, please feel free to uh, follow Velocidex. Um, that's the handle for Velociraptor, the folks behind it. Um, you know, if you have any questions of me, please uh, let me know at the real W Lambert, or uh, you know, just uh, shout out to Blue Team Village, and uh, you know, let us know if you enjoyed this. And if you want to dig in more and uh, you know, really go through the documentation, there is a link here, that offline collections page that I referred to. And again, that is really gonna be a great place to go. Aside from this video, uh, it really lays out the different steps that you'll need to get going with this. So uh, again, please feel free to reach out if you need, uh, have any feedback or any questions. And uh, until then, uh, happy hunting and have a great day. And you're good.